tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good game, Johnson. AfterBuzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Oh my it's god, low, guys. but it's there. Mm -hmm. This is it. Oh god, I can't take it. This is it. This is like awful, but amazing, and just oh, I have so many emotions. Yeah. This is the last stand. After Buzz TV, Mob Wives. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Brazier. You can follow me at Nicole Brazier on all social media. And to my left are another uh, pair of amazing hosts. Yes, I am Blake V. Very happy to be here tonight on our finale. It's like the le legit finale this time, and it's crazy. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Blake V Media. Hey everybody, it's Howard the Third. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Howard the Third. That's Howard the Three RD, and I'm so excited to talk about the episode tonight. What's more exciting is that we have the one, the only Drita on the line. How are you, Drita? Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited. Only here at After Buzz TV. I mean, we can't even take it. Everyone in the media so is trying to get a hold of Drita, and look who got her, guys. That's right. You know why? They, they, you have connections. Ah. <laughs> you know, keep it real. There we go. <laughs> That's what we do. Because if you don't, you're never going to get me. I get, you know, oh, how does it work now on this? Can I curse? Yes, yes, of course. Be you. I think right, I'm going to get in trouble later for cursing too much last week. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I'm not going to curse. I was just joking. But anyway, yeah, it's, I, I wanted to talk to you really bad. I mean, it's very frustrating and, and tough in the position I'm in with anything. I mean, I have to get contacted directly from uh, all the outlets and the press because every time they try to get through to me, mm -hmm. uh, my co-stars are sent. And they're lied to and they're told I'm not available. I guess no one wants to hear my side of the story mm -hmm. because my side is the truth. So it's really annoying. God, that's that really is annoying. That's interesting to to know that this show that you've been on and you've been working with and everything is um is doing that. It's doing mm -hmm. that to you. You know what? It's it's not it's not the network. VH1 is great, and I love them. It's just it was people really don't understand, and I'm gonna break it down for everyone what Mob Wives is how we all know each other. Like, I read the tweets, I read everything, and everyone's like, don't fight with your friends. And said, don't fight with your friends. What they don't understand is, those are not my friends. So to clear that up, mm -hmm. when we came on this show, I went on an, uh, a casting for the show, like um, a while, what was it, six years ago. And then Jennifer decided, to, Jennifer was a good friend of mine, the co uh creator and yes. co-producer whatever she was a re really good friend of mine and i was always you know close with her and no one was around at the time like karen or nobody they all had a past but she was even older than me jennifer now renee was jennifer's older sister so like you know when you have a friend with an older sister you're in the house you see them come in and out in the kitchen that's just the older sister and it's a big age difference so I didn't really know Renee like that. I just knew she was my friend's older sister. As for Karen, Karen I hung out with when I was probably 19 years old for like a year or so. So it wasn't like I grew up with her. She's older than me too. And Carl I didn't know from a hole in the wall. She's a lot. She's like 10 years older. So when I'm 10 years old, she's 20 years old in the club. So I, I obviously I couldn't be growing up with her. Mm -hmm. But um, her parents actually bought my house. That was like the first time I ever even really met her. Wow. And, and then the show was put together, mm -hmm. and I was told by Jennifer this will be, you know, women empowering women, and believe it or not. And, you know, <laughs> you guys all have a connection, and blah, blah, blah. That's what I was told. Mm -hmm. And I was lied to. I walked into a, a disaster that I was very unhappy about because I was in a bad place in my life. So I was, was thinking, this will be great, you know, to go on the show and show the struggle. Everything I thought the show was going to be was not. 
Mm. So I was really, really, really stressed out and unhappy. And then it was just the conflict of interest. You know, I'm on yeah. the show with with Renee's sister as the executive producer. You know, it's tough. And and then she's great friends with Karen. And then, you know, it became very messy. And I got the shit end of it. I, I really, really was in a bad, bad position. It's not easy. And, like, just for example, this, like, if someone has to go through Jennifer to get me for press, Mm -hmm. Um, hello, she's going to send her sister. You know, I mean, listen, if you ask anybody, they probably would do the same thing, but that's not fair to me either. So, you know, and I'm I'm getting contacted directly from press Mm -hmm. telling me this. You know, what do you mean? You're not available? What do you mean you're not available? We want to talk to you. I'm like, I didn't even know you wanted to talk to me. I didn't even know about it. So I went through a very difficult time. Thank God for VH1. Otherwise, I probably forget about it. I was very stressed on this show, very, very badly. Oh. I'm relieved it's over. Oh, well, we're, we, we can tell. given all of that and everything you just said about how hard it was to get a hold of you, we're even more thankful that you're here tonight. This yes. is amazing. We want to know you. all of this stuff. Thanks, Drita. So when it came to casting then, were you approached by, by Jen uh, because she was your friend about coming on this show? Like, how, yeah, how did you get some pulled guy in? Contacted, some guy had the concept for this show. So he asked Jen if she knew anybody. So Jen was like, oh, Jennifer always wanted... Like, she always used to say to me, she does have the, the eye for that. Like, she's, you know, like how there's people that are agents or whatever. She yes. was very much involved in that and wanted to be, like, a manager. That was what she wanted to do. And she, we were friends. She always used to say, you know, you're so funny. You have such great personality. You have to go on TV. We have to do something with you. And we had done, um, you know that song, uh, F You Right Back by Frankie. I mean, this goes way back. Mm-hmm. But anyway, there was a song, mm-hmm. and she was like, oh, you should play the best friend. I did all this stuff for the video. They actually used my ass for the cover of the single. Ah, Isn't that oh, funny? Wow. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> but, yeah, so Jen, Jen did that for me, mm-hmm. but I didn't get a penny from it. So, you know what, I was like, ah, oh, it's my friend. <laughs> yeah, I was a single mom yeah. at the time. I was like, that's all a bit odd, but I didn't really get, I didn't get nothing. I didn't get a dollar. Mm. But long story short, she just was like, she had that vision, and she was just like, I want to, you know, she told me, she's like, somebody wants to do a show with women's husbands that are in jail. So why don't you try it out, whatever. So I, then when I turned around, it was more or less she wanted to put together because she knew everybody that she thinks would be great for it and do it herself. So that's how the show started. Carla was someone like she knew, like Jen knew that Carla grew up with Renee. Like they actually grew up together. Mm. Not even Karen and Renee. It's like weird, like Karen was friends with Jen too, so Renee was always her her older sister. It wasn't like that. But then when we all started filming, I mean right off the jump, there was issues right away. And I was just like, this is not good, like common sense wise. I'm like, how is this gonna work? You know, you can't manage a whole cast. It's too tough. You know, it, it was just not good. I just really, really wish I would have not trusted people that I have trusted. But it's all right. You know, you live, you learn. And then when when the show started, it was a disaster. I mean, mm-hmm. I never in my life thought that it would be the way it is. And it was yeah. too stressful and miserable. And everybody's so fucking fake. Sorry. But they're so fake. Like, I can't. And sometimes I sit on my couch and I watch the show and I'm like, this can't be happening right now. Like, they, they're they not actresses, but damn, they're good. Like, they're liars. <laughs> we as viewers were kind of, we almost forgot about the season one drama between Renee and Karen. So for them right. to kind of flash yeah. back to that, mm-hmm. it, I mean, it, it makes... You know what? I, I forgot... I didn't, like, when the show, when they were fighting, like, Renee was ripping town, ripping her family, I don't hang out with rats, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And I felt sorry for Karen at that time. I really did. I always did. Like, even when I first met her, I didn't meet Karen when her father was an underboss. I, already, I met Karen after, when nobody wanted Karen around. But I'm like that person, like, when someone's getting bullied, I stick up for them. I've been mm-hmm. that person my whole life. I actually fought for people that it wasn't even my business, but you're not going to abuse the kid in the wheelchair. I'll break your face. I was just like that. That's not mm-hmm. the right way to take care of it, but I don't like people getting bullied. And I felt like when Karen came, Renee didn't give her a chance. I stuck up for Karen, and that's what's so crazy because, like, 
I blinked my eye, and the two of them were ripping me, and they, they, all of a sudden they were best friends. Like, I'm not that, I don't understand that. I can't understand how you can, and they're not talking like she's a bitch. They're talking terrible, like talking about their family, talking about terrible things. Yeah. That's why I can't be that forgiving. I don't know anyone that can. And then they skip along the beach holding hands. No, now we like each other. So I started to see everybody for their true colors right away. But, you know, the only person I truly loved to death was Ange. That yeah. was it. Everyone else, especially like Carla. Carla, I mean, look at the turn she made. I feel like they're just all a bunch of opportunists. And listen to each his own. You want to get ahead? They will make like they like each other, mm -hmm. hang out to get ahead, to do what they have to do. They will kiss ass. I am not that person. If you're not real to me and you're disloyal, I don't care. If you're telling me you're beat, you're out of a job now because you're not kissing my ass and you're not, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'd rather stand alone. That's why I was standing alone. And, you know, I used to have long conversations with Ange about it because mm -hmm. Ange used to laugh and be like, nobody's like that. No one's like you. Was it like hard? Everybody, you know, they, they do what they got to do. Was yeah. it hard for you to not have Angela with you at the reunion? Because she left before you even got there. Yeah, it was so brief. I was, mm -hmm. I was so upset that she wasn't, like, I didn't get to film with her the last scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, that was really messed up that they did that, you know? I mean, we had our heart to heart. Angela and I were on the same page, and they purposely did that. You know what, when you, when they, in their minds, they knew I would never come back. Once the show was canceled, if you knew what I went through, like I would do anything. I didn't care if they fired me. I really didn't care. Didn't Karen say something about this on an interview with you on, oh, we were all supposed to negotiate mm -hmm. and not go back to work. I think she said, and Drita did, she went back to work yeah. and screwed us. Yeah, yeah, she that's said that. absolutely not true. I didn't go back to work. They did what I did to, to get a raise. Unfortunately, they were fired. I felt terrible for them. That I don't, I don't, you know, I'd rather beat you up every day. I'm not going to try to get you fired. So, but they were brainwashed and manipulated to believe different. And they had, like, they were in cahoots to, like, hate my guts. But that's, that was the whole cause of the show all the time. Hey, Drita, blame Drita. I mean, if El Chapo was kicked, it's my fault. If you ask him, I'm It kind of was like they put a, a, a pit bull in a, in a cage, mm -hmm. what, having you watch them and then you kind of being the last to come out and... Yeah, yeah, we what we were watching that? that, and we yeah. just thought that was like messed up. I made the comment. I'm like, why are they doing this to her? It makes no sense. Like they were showing you all of this material, and it was all this shit talk, and just to all make this me crazy. Yeah. And yeah, and then they just well, let you, you know lose. The best part is then they'll be like, oh, she's an animal. I can't even talk to her. I'm just here to talk. That is so. This is this can make anybody crazy. Yeah. Let me mm -hmm. let me tell you a little story here, Karen tried to sing that tune that oh why is she flipping out remember when i was in the restaurant the last episode i flipped out on marissa i flipped out on karen mm -hmm. but then when i flip out they're like look i'm here to talk can't you just be a grown-up and talk they're sick twisted delusional liars karen had texted me text me i had that's what's crazy like i have the texts i could be an asshole and just put it on instagram and say see everybody see i'm not a fucking asshole like that that's probably why she does what she does to me but she had text me oh you want to take care of this well me i mean really how mature is that so i was like all right wonderful is it my birthday right now that i get to meet up with you and punch your face in because this is wonderful <laughs> that's how i looked at it so i was like okay so I texted her back, time and place. Mm -hmm. I waited, I waited. I was like, hello. Oh, I'm going to the city, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and then the next day, I'm uh, like, time and place. This was mm, before the reunion because right. she did give me a text. Yeah. Oh, let's fight without the cameras around. I was so happy. I mean, I, mean, I know that's terrible and that's not really mature, but I was very happy. Yeah. So I was like, you know, but she never got back to me. She didn't want to meet up with me. But then I go in you called me out right i go in slipping out and she's like i don't know what's wrong with her i can't believe this she's crazy can that make somebody nuts yeah absolutely i was getting nuts just watching you go through it <laughs> yeah. right yeah. but nobody knows yeah. that that's what i'm saying and then renee renee will have issues 
And I felt sorry for Renee. And I'll mm-hmm. call her, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? You know, and then I watch her on the scene, and she's like, I don't care if she drops dead. Yeah. Really? That's funny, because I remember last I checked, I called to check up on you. Mm-hmm. You know what? And then I have Carla. She'll text me, oh, no, we have no beef. There's no, no problems. Okay, that's cool. Wonderful. All of a sudden, so did you see Carla? Do you see what she's saying? Do you see what she's tweeting? I'm like, what the hell is going on? Liz, listen. Carla used to say to me, those are fat old women. I'm older than them. I look better than them. And I would never associate with those losers. That's exactly what she used to say. And then Karen would say, this is all on tape. I mean, Mm -hmm. you could watch the reunion. Karen would say, I don't know how you hang out with Carla. I'm like, I like Carla. She's like, she's a racist. She's part of the KKK. This is how, that's a strong accusation. Like, you don't just say that. That's not saying, okay, she bangs married men, which they used to say. About Carla? really messed up to say Mm. something like that, you know? And then I would sit back and be like, why would they say that, you know? But let's say I believe them, because they are liars. What they do is, again, whatever, whatever benefits them, it will make you believe something about someone. So you dislike them. It's kind of like high school. If anyone went through this, maybe younger, seventh grade. So you, <laughs> they make up a story. I want you to hate her. Be on my team. Be on my team. Then once you hate her, you blink your eye, and then they're friends. Mm-hmm. So that's why I didn't listen to them. And then you know what? All of a sudden, Karen's like, I love Carla. We're best friends now. So what happened? Carla no longer, like Renee said, I, don't, I said, why don't you like Carla? Because Carla was sleeping with my son's husband. That's her words. I would never do that to my friends. But now they hang out. What Mm -hmm. happened to your friends? Don't use the word loyalty, Renee. Or did you make up the story? These are things that were filmed that you guys don't see. I filmed this on camera. Mm -hmm. That sit down in this last episode, I looked at Carla and I said, Karen's a liar. She's called my husband a rat. He's not a rat. She called everybody a rat that's not a rat. I said, everything she says is a lie. Carla's like, no, no, she don't lie. So you know what I said? I go, she doesn't? So you are racist? You do sleep with married men? She goes, absolutely not. This was filmed, but they took mm-hmm. it out. Uh, I said, okay, so you're saying she's a liar. And she's like, well, that wasn't true. And then I go down the list, and she's like, that's not true either. And that's not true. Okay, so just say it. She yeah. lies. That's it. That's all I want you to say. And the same thing happened when I filmed with Ange. You know, Ange was like, get out of here with Karen. You know, she called everybody a rat. She, you know, that's what she does, taken out. You know, I, I, it's very hard for me because I proved points and facts of what a sick liar Karen is, mm-hmm. and they took it out. So what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Because they're all continuing to film together and do other projects. So they have to make them look good. They have to, you know. And you know what? I I went through it. I got through it. I fought through the storm. It hurt me because a lot of people are like, Drea, why are you so mad about that? Mm-hmm. Like when I was flipping out with Marissa on the phone. I yeah. wasn't mad about what they thought I was mad about. I was mad that Karen was running her mouth and, yeah. and calling Lee something he's not. You just don't do that. If you're from the streets, my husband got ratted on and was put in prison. Mm-hmm. She knows the story. Because she's a bitter ex-girlfriend, she just wants to make up shit about Lee. Like, she'll sit there and be like, oh, people don't like him. What people, Karen? No one likes you or speaks to you. What people? <laughs> Not in Staten Island. She wasn't even invited to restaurants. We couldn't even film there because of her. And you um, know what? She tries to just, it's a bully tactic. They all do it. And Carla was weak and not intelligent, and she felt for it. So would you she say... Tell me all the time. Sorry to interrupt you, but would you say no, that can... um, Karen is a factor as to why you dropped Carla as a friend? Um, Karen is... Yeah, she. I could say that. I mean, I, not that... No. I didn't drop her as a friend. I wasn't liking a lot of things I saw mm-hmm. and heard for myself. But it still wasn't that serious, so I would never talk to her again. Um, but what happened was when we had to renegotiate, and put it this way, going back to the show, they did exactly what I did. You know, we wanted a raise. We deserved a raise. We were beat. And I didn't go to work because I wanted to get a raise, like Karen said on your show. Mm-hmm. And they did what I did, but they got fired. 
and they negotiated with me. What? Why so, did they get fired? That's what I want to know. But what were you going to ask? I guess, you know, why they get fired, I, I don't know. I'm not the network. I'm not, you know, the production company. I don't know. I mean, listen, there could be several factors. I mean, but I can't say I'm not the boss. Like, that's another thing. I'm not the boss. Like, how the hell could I do something like that? And why would I? I actually was getting along with them. But now think about it. Now, they were angry. They were angry with everything. They wanted a raise. I don't blame them. They should have got it. But then they get fired. I actually went up in the meeting, and I was crying. I was so upset that everybody got fired. I was like, what the hell happened? I mean, just give them a raise. You know, that's not my say. But, you know, so, and they yeah. just replaced them. I guess it's TV, you know. They mm-hmm. replaced them. They brought in Alicia. They brought in Natalie, and they continued the show. But now... Carla was like texting me, oh, you know, I don't believe it, but uh, they're saying that you're the reason that we got fired. Uh, I was like, what are you talking about? How the hell could I be the reason? I I didn't go to work either. We all took the same gamble. You want to gamble on a roulette table? I put all my money on a number. You guys did too. If it hits my number, why are you angry with me? I wanted them to come back because we were getting along. I would never wish that on anybody. Are I'd you, rather fight them every day. Are but you, anyway, they were manipulated and lied to. And then Karen was sitting there like, oh, look. You know, I guess you know they were, I guess they were bitter and angry. Did but you went, have any I, say? Would you admit that you had a say into helping them get back on the show, like with your support and your, I guess, like... No, they, they, they didn't get shit what I said they when didn't I was care. in that office. They okay. wouldn't happen if they would place mm-hmm. them, and that was it. Right. All I knew was... Then all of a sudden, now I just, I'll tell you what really turned me off, and me and Ange when it came to Carla. Because mm-hmm. now she wasn't on the show, and she disappeared. She wouldn't call, talk to us. Like, then I was like, wait a minute, did you just hang out with me because we were on the show together? Like, I'm sorry it didn't work out for you to come back, but why aren't you calling or talking to me anymore? Driving in the parking lot, I would go outside and be like, hey, Carla, what's up, or whatever. I, she was so mad, I guess, because she lost her job, but that was not my fault, and I felt sorry for her. But she really, really, like, was angry about it. And let's be real. Anybody casted on this show will tell you the same story. You can speak to everyone on this show, and they will tell you if you hate Rita or you'll make up lies about her or go against her, you'll be on the show. Wow. Did you ever see this show have a casting where someone came in through me? Or someone came in liking me? No. Watch my wife. You're mm-hmm. going to watch it. Everybody that comes on right. comes in through them. They don't know them from a hole in the wall. And they, they're supposed to hate me. And if they end up liking me, that poor girl will go through hell. It happened with Natalie. happened with Brittany. Mm-hmm. happened with Alicia. It's the same mm-hmm. story. So the only person they couldn't make change was Ange. They tried, but they couldn't make her. Oh, Ange. Mm-hmm. Howard, you were going to ask Rita something before. Yeah, I just wanted to know, did they, um, Karen, when Karen was on the show with us last week, she said that each of the girls who were, who got fired wrote a letter to VH1, and you were supposed to write a letter too. Did you end up writing that letter or no? Oh, I wrote more than one. Oh. And how about this? This is the best part of the story. She was told that in mm. a meeting to her face. When she was coming back on the show, She was told that by a very important person that would not lie. Looked her directly in the face and said, yes, it was a lens sent by Drita too. Mm. So Karen was lied to and manipulated. She knows the truth. She just wants to make you believe different and everyone else to believe different. But she knows. I told it to her face. And an important person, you couldn't get bigger than that to tell it to her face. So she's lying. She lies all the time. She sat on your show and said she knew Marissa. She didn't know Marissa from a hole in the wall. How about that? From a hole in the wall. If Brittany was on the phone right now, Brittany would tell, tell, like, Brittany doesn't even believe it. She thinks that women like this don't exist in history. (laughs) (laughs) Now, she also said, Karen also said that her and Brittany were close. And while she was at Brittany's, uh, while Karen and Brittany were at, you know, uh, Karen's house, Karen told Brittany that you, Drita, would try to change Britney, and Britney didn't believe it. And now, look at her. You know, they have their father. Well, you out. know what? You know, like, okay, a thief always thinks that he's getting robbed. Mm. A, a person that schemes always thinks someone's scheming. Mm. I'm not Karen. 
Mm-hmm. I would never be Karen. I would never want to be Karen. Karen just assumed that because that's what she does. Mm-hmm. She tried to make Brittany dislike me. Brittany came. You know why Brittany? She says it in, in her interviews why she truly liked me because everything they talked about when it came to me and they told her, Brittany, you'll see. She's going to do this. She's going to say that. She's going to go on and on. Brittany hung out with me and then we finished filming and then we hung out off camera in my store for hours. And I was doing makeup on or whatever. And when it was all said and done, it was all done. She was like, oh, we have it out. I was like, what's wrong? She's like, nothing. Then we hung out again. And then she turned around and she was like, this is crazy. She was like, you are nothing like they said you are. I said, oh, you're listening to a bunch of women that hate me? I said, but you can't do that. I said, you know, you just can't. But then she was just like, then she told them. She's like, look, you guys said that Drita's going to bash you and try to make me not like you. Drita didn't speak not one of your names, nothing. I said nothing about them, hours and hours. Same thing happened with Marissa. I saw her at a party, nothing. I don't speak those women. If I don't have to, I will not talk about them ever. Mm -hmm. But they don't do anything else but talk about me, talk bad about me on Twitter nonstop. And then when I flip out and lose my temper... And then they're like, what's wrong with her? She's crazy. Um, quick question. Would you say that Brittany might have been the only wife that went into the show half liking you at least? Because you know the the rumor in the media no, did say that she was your, I'm still your biggest with fan. We're very close. Okay. Um, I'm still friends with Natalie. I'm st- and I will still be friends with Brittany. And that was another thing. Didn't Karen say, oh, Drita don't like Marissa because Marissa's pretty? Did she say that? Did she say that she said something like, "I, I, I I'll get jealous of her because she's pretty or something." Oh, that that's why I didn't like her. Like Karen said something like, "I didn't like Marissa because Marissa's pretty." Um, Alicia is gorgeous. How is like she said so it. pretty? Brittany's a model. Um, mm. What the hell is she talking about? The old, I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. What are I you think you're all about, pretty. Karen? Yeah. <laughs> so how, how's um, your how was your opinion actually about Marissa's boldness to, toward you? Especially, I guess, I feel like OZ has a lot to do with it, but I feel like she never really want to beat around the bush with you. She was pretty straightforward with you, and you were kind of calm, cool, and collected with her as a viewer, I would say, for the most part. Yeah, well, you know why? Because when we met, I mean, again, there's a lot of stuff that was off camera. She was really, like, she was being really, really, like, level-headed and... She was like, oh, I got to, you know, there's certain things I have to say because we're filming, you know what I mean? She was being pretty cool. She she didn't want to have a problem with me. Mm-hmm. I think that she was definitely too weak-minded or scared to fight the bullies that she had to roll with them because she was probably like, and it's easier to do that. That's yeah. why yeah. I respect mm-hmm. Brittany. Yeah. It is easier. Brittany could have easily been like, all right, let me just jump on this team and hate on Drita even if I don't. Like, Marissa has no reason to hate me. Mm-hmm. I don't even know the girl. Nobody knew Marissa. Mm-hmm. So when she came on the show, she was like, you know, they brought her onto her wing. The thing is with Renee and Karen, they're very much those women that if they, if they can't control you, they don't want nothing to do with you. They couldn't control Brittany, but they could control Marissa. So they liked her. If Marissa turned around and said, uh, you're not going to tell me who to like and what to do, it would have been a wrap for her, too. And that's what happened with Natalie. That's what happened with Alicia. That's what, did you see them come back the next year on the show? No, right? No. I thought you had a good point <laughs> that's tonight. Why, because they liked me. That's why. And I can't have a crew on the show. I can't hang out. Because if all the mob wives were on this show, it would have been me, Angelisha, Natalie, and Brittany. And guess what? Who would have been by themselves? The, the, the OGs. The, the, and well, the rest of them. Well, what she calls them the three amigos. The three amigos. <laughs> that's uh, right. Real quick, that's, if you... That's, that's who would have been alone. Uh, real, real quick, if uh, since we're on the topic of celebrity boyfriends now, if you guys are curious about celebrity bo- boyfriends, especially in their midlife crisis, and you enjoy hearing stories about behind the scenes of Hollywood, we have a new show here at After Buzz TV. Uh, and, of course, Kevin Undergaro, who is oh, newly yes. engaged to Maria, Maria Menounos. Congratulations, Congratulations again to the both of them. Um, so join him and Maria, as well as other co-hosts here at AfterBuzz, like Roxy Stryer, Ashley Daniels, for the Insanity on the Tomorrow Show. show. Uh, it's live on Monday and Thursday nights, 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and you can go on the tomorrowshow.com or subscribe on iTunes for free. 
Back to Drita. Back to Drita. Now I know I, I like that. I don't think I can do your job. <laughs> Are you still like in your car, by the way, on your phone? Because I'm just out. picturing you. And, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you hear it? Yeah, I am. I told you I'm hiding out. Actually, the sound sleeping, good. And, the yeah, sounds was, good. They're, they're sleeping, and they, I don't want to wake them up. I was like, you know, what am I going to do? Whisper like this. Hey guys. No. <laughs> Trita, I, I mean, you know, it's funny. People just think like they see your kids on TV, but they don't realize, uh, hello, I'm a mom. Like they'll be like, right. all the mob boys are out and about all night, everywhere. They go to clubs. And why aren't you in clubs? I'm like, oh, my God. Clubs. Children. I'm like, I worked all day. I'm laying with my daughter, and I'm very happy with my, my kids and my dogs and my husband. Trita <laughs> and I, uh, guys, actually first met in a club. She doesn't remember meeting me, but I served her a drink oh. uh, when I was 20 years old. How awesome is that? In Long Island, yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. Was it with Lee? Wait, I mean, that's no, cool, you came though. solo to sit. Wait, you to well, why were you bartending when you just like, you're a big star now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, on Twitter, I've got a ton of haters because I interviewed Karen last that's week. That's when you know you're doing. Can something I apologize right? for that interview? By the way, it was a little, we had a little party pre-game <laughs> celebration. We celebrated Ange, so I was yeah. kind of. You know. Did you hear the tribute Happy. that we did for Ange? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was everything. The, the VH1 the, tribute? The v, no, the song. The song, the the song. on the radio the song. now. Yes. 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 That's what people are asked. The, by the way, we haven't even talked to you about the chat flooding. Like, just, oh, it's yeah. pouring in. These people are crazy. We have over 300 people tuning in live right now. A bunch of awesome. likes on the show. Yeah, Drita, Everybody's asking questions. I saw that you tweeted earlier today for people to send you suggestions of what to do for the video. Do you, have yes. you gotten any good ones yet today? Um, you know what? My Twitter feed was so insane that I, when it <laughs> calmed even down, I could look through it. I mean, it was going crazy. Mm. Yeah. When when my boys, um, when it airs, like I told you, I have my fans are so loyal and they're so good, and they go. It's so funny because they go on this crazy rampage and they start fighting with the cast. It's so funny. <laughs> like I don't fight with them. They yeah. fight mm -hmm. with them, and then they'll tweet me. You know what she said, and they take it so personal, and it's funny. I love them. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah. Aw. Okay, real quick, the fans want to know about this Donald Trump uh, video <laughs> slash issue. So, what do you have to say about it? I don't know about it. What it do you, you don't mean? know? What Donald Trump? So Donald Trump. Uh, what, 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 the guy that was fighting over there? With or Karen? Something? Oh, with Karen. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, well, it says, like but it says minus Karen. Like Karen can run out a, a, a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. They're going to love that. The fans are going to love that one. <laughs> Well, it, yeah, I mean... Only Karen, only Karen. Leave it to Karen. How do you do... What's she saying on this? They would connect. You know what the sickest thing is? They didn't even use her name on in the in the news. I, I think I read the, the beginning and they said they, they didn't even use her name, like Karen Gravano. And she said that she was connected to him or something. Um, yeah, through through her father, I think. Something right, about and, her and, father and, and denying Donald. knowing the dad to, to keep out, <laughs> keep that business. out of the. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, guys, but that's so funny to me. <laughs> you know, it's. You know what? You know, this girl is crazy. I mean, she always keep her mouth shut. Did you watch her on the show when she gets angry? She starts singing like a bird. In the mob, they call that chirping. Yeah. She, she's standing there like, I know things, I know secrets. Yeah. And then you just sit on your couch like, holy cow. Yeah. Thank God I didn't tell her any secrets. Yes. So <laughs> this came up a couple episodes ago, too. I remember saying something about this on one of our after shows. We see what we see as the viewers. It's sort of like the storyline that goes along. We kind of, you know, we're, we're a little bit familiar with the drama or whatever it is. But when when stuff really gets crazy and it really goes down, you know, key people will start doing that, saying all kinds of stuff that we as viewers don't even know what they're talking about. Like, oh, 20 years ago, this, that, and the other happened. And we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Chirping. Really, though. Well, you know what's funny? Like, in. Karen was saying this, Karen, this is the best part. When when I was younger, I didn't. I grew up in the projects. I didn't grow up like these girls. These girls grew up very wealthy. You know, their dads were who they were, and I didn't really know them. The Karen's younger brother, I dated the younger brother's uh, the younger brother's friend. Karen used to fool around 
with the younger brother's friends this when she was dating with Lee. And one of them was my boyfriend at the time. Oh. And I remember, yeah. So she was sleeping <laughs> like with losing my, my mind boyfriend right now. when she was dating Lee. And the funny oh, thing is, funny. I said that on the show, but of course they removed it. <laughs> so um, the funny thing is, I, I heard of her that way. That's the first time I heard of Karen Gravano because at the time my boyfriend's like, Oh, I, I broke up with him. It was something stupid, not a serious relationship. I was, I was younger. And he, and he was like, I don't care. I was cheated on you with Karen Gravano anyway. I said, who the hell's Karen Gravano? I remember some girl in the kitchen going, Sammy the Bull's daughter. I said, who's Sammy the Bull? I had no idea who these people were. Wow. And then, um, and that, I didn't care. That's why on the rooftop, before I smashed her to the ground, <laughs> I said to her, who cares about ex-boyfriend stuff? You slept with my ex-boyfriend when you were dating Lee. Like, who cares? 20 years ago. Did, does anybody really comprehend the fact that it, when she did date Lee, it was 20 years ago? Do you know right. how psychotic so that is? So much time has speak? passed. You couldn't pay me a million dollars an episode <laughs> to go on the show and talk about anyone I dated 20 years ago. Right. I mean, you, plus when kids come into the picture, it's like, move on. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Kids, it's, hello. Imagine having a daughter, like, in the house being like, hey, mom, why are you talking about <laughs> that guy and fighting with the wife that is a family with right. him? Yeah. Right. Right. You know, it's, it's just, to me, it's just crazy. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. People are so crazy on this chat right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, they're talking about how you, you got... French Montana, like, kind of famous, right? Because you... Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't get him famous. That's what they're I, saying. I jumped on that track. You heard that remix. That was, mm -hmm. I had so much right. fun doing that. So and, can we uh, expect more music from you? Um, well, I did. I just, listen, this one thing about me, Ange wanted me to go back to the studio. When I heard the track, they, the tribute, the rap song they did to Ange, yeah. and disco was her favorite music, they did such a great job, and it was yeah. so touching. I cried mm -hmm. so much when I heard it. Mm -hmm. I called them, and I was like, JoJo, I want to jump on this track. He was like, you do. when I got to the studio, I couldn't rap it. I was crying. I was, see, there's one thing about me, like, Ange used to laugh, because she'd go, everybody thinks you're so tough. You're the biggest mush. If you tell, Aww. if she would say, if you tell, <laughs> if you tell you that the neighbor's dog got sick, She's gonna be crying oh. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very sensitive when it comes to. Well, first of all, that was a very close friend of mine. I was. Yeah, I let's was talk destroyed. about Ange for just a minute. Um, you know, we saw that you guys had a relationship that went back many years, and you guys mm -hmm. were very close. And out of all the women, uh, you even said this a little earlier. You, you remained closest to Ange. So, what kind of are your feelings um, being on this show with Ange and now sort of dealing with her passing? Um, you know what, I, the week of, the week of when Ange passed away, that, that week I had lost my brother-in-law, who was a, oh, who was wow. a very, very, very close friend of mine. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and out of nowhere from a heart attack, thank you. Mm -hmm. And he had a heart attack, it was out of nowhere, and I was so devastated and destroyed over it. Mm -hmm. It was probably not even 48 hours later. And Ange passed away. Oh, Jesus. I was in the middle. I was in the middle of a crisis in the house. It was very bad, a very, very hard time for me, my husband, and the family. And I knew, I, I knew Ange was like not feeling well. I didn't think she would pass away. I mean, I, you just don't want to believe that, but mm. especially it was so quick. Yeah, and I was it was like, too quick. I ha yeah, it was just so quick. But I had. I, in the middle of a crisis, I had to leave and go see her. My husband didn't even want me to drive. He was like, you, you know, I was crying so much. He's like, you can't drive like this. I said, I have to go see Ange because if I don't, I will never be able to live with myself. Yeah. Mm. Like, God forbid something happens, you know. I, I'm very close with his sister, Janine, mm. who is amazing. And she's best friends. That, forget it. What she's done for Ange, no one can even fathom. Like, mm. she made me actually wish I had a sister. Oh, and wow. she, she, I talked to, I'm very close with her when Andrew's really not feeling well. Um, I was always like, even though she wasn't on the phone, I was always talking to Janine to see how she's doing. But then uh, me and Ange had a heart to heart. It was tough because the show was, you know, she was so good to me. She would tell me, my baby, she always called me a baby. She'd yeah. be like, my baby, I'm sorry. You know, they were always talking about you, always coming after you. 
you hold your ground. I love how real you are. You stay, you stay true to yourself. Because I would tell her, Andrew, I can't forgive them. You know, I, I understand. Like, she used to tell me all the time, don't fight with your friends. And I'd look at her and go, yeah, but those are not my friends. She'd be like, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> 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 she knew they were friends of mine. I don't fight with my friends. But yeah. anyway, having her not around, yeah, it, it, I couldn't. I was... I was already crying my eyes out when I found out she had stage four brain cancer. So I was already, it was kind of like I was grieving that whole time okay. because I know how difficult from what I've heard and, you know, personal experiences, yeah. people had a hard time fighting it. I was scared. I was really scared. And I was really sad that she wasn't, that bothered me so much that the reunion yeah. should have been, Ange came in at the end and was with all of us yeah because yeah. jennifer and told us that she had to walk away from that table because she wasn't feeling well now would you say that that was the case or do you stand by the fact that what you said earlier to us is that she was taken away and almost purposely left to not be there to have your back well do you want to know why i said that yeah because when we were filming the show this season i asked to do a surprise party for her uh, a fuck cancer party mm -hmm. I wanted to do in my backyard for her it was turned down mm -hmm. I tried to do something else for her turned down I wanted to go away with her and do something no so she had she was always like had a film with them I think it's because they well I know it's because you know she truly loved me we were really friends but they wanted I feel like they were threatened that we were very powerful together everyone loved mm -hmm. us together yeah. and you know, like, um, I mean, the other girls, I mean, Carl is like watching paint dry. Karen can't be more annoying, you know, and Renee rolls around in the floor screaming if there's <laughs> breadcrumbs on the floor. So, you know, like, it's, it's necessary to have Ange filming with them so you could actually walk and watch the scene, in my opinion. Sorry, the bread, the, the, bread, the, 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 the bread crumbs thing. Like it's just like it's, I can picture it. It's genius. Like it's just you guys like also have to I know. If I put the show on, Karen will be like, "I'm the realest bitch going. I'm the real." When you're real, you don't have to tell people you're real. That's true. Oh, I remember that. dang. Oh, dang. Yes, yeah. with the shade. Thank, I'm thank here goodness for it. this is the last episode of After Buzz TV Mob Wives. Yeah. We made we wanted to make it so that Drita could have the final say. Yes. say. And I'm telling Drita, I'm like, well, let's see, part two. Like, how could we get her on part two and not have the ladies be upset? Well, there is no more part. There is no part two. So this is <laughs> this is good news. Thank God there's no part two. <laughs> no one's going to ever see my points being proven. I, I outright showed what a liar Karen is. I outright showed it. I had scenes with Ange that were incredible, but all these scenes were not good for them. Mm -hmm. So whatever project they're working on and want to manipulate and make people believe something that's not, maybe that's what it was all about. Because, I mean, they should have just really kept it real. Me and Ange, Ange used to tell me everything. Ange would be like, oh, God, now they're telling me you talked about me, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? She was so good and real and loyal. Yeah. And, like, if I would go hang out with her, like, I didn't want any heat put on her. Isn't that so sad? Like, I wouldn't even post half the pictures after the times we hung out. So she didn't have to hear their mouth. Yeah. Like, if you hang out with me, you, you're going to go through hell with them. Mm -hmm. That's how sick they are. Mm -hmm. When it comes to me, it's me. They just can't stop. Twitter, I don't think I have one, maybe one tweet out of 5,000 tweets I've ever tweeted anything with Carla. I don't even pay attention to her. She's like a screaming child on the floor, screaming. Yeah, and that's what the face. fans were saying, and, that yeah. she's a, like a Twitter thug or Twitter. Dude, it's annoying. <laughs> it's annoying. And then she'll text me. I'll be like, hey, you want to meet right now? Because you said a lot of things I want to set straight. And she's like, no, we're cool. And then I, I turn around and she's going on a rampage. It's very easy to do that. When I was young, that was called a bully. Yeah, and then right. when you when you pull their card and you're mm -hmm. face to face with them, they fold. And I'm, I, I've always, always smacked bullies around. Oh, I don't like yeah. them. Like people don't know one thing about me. I don't want to. Yes, it's not. You know, that's not the right thing to do. To just go punch someone in the face. But I was the one in high school that would walk down the hallway. And there was a, a kid in my hall, in the hallway, and he was getting bullied, and he was getting abused, and they, they were making fun of him because he was gay. I didn't know this kid from a hole in a wall. I walked over, and I smacked 
the shit out of the kid talking to him like that. Yeah. yeah. I snapped him up, and I said, don't you ever talk to him. And I told the kid, I said, don't you ever let anyone talk to you like that. Mm -hmm. He was crying. I felt so sorry for him. Mm -hmm. But 90% of my fights were me sticking up for someone. Mm -hmm. I don't have problems with people. And then, you know, I mean, obviously, I'd be in the office, and the dean would be like, Trita. I mean, I know you want to fight the world and fight the bullies for everybody. You just can't do that. Right. But I would do it. I would. Yeah. I really, those things really, really made me. I'm very passionate. I hate it. And I went through it for six years. I had everybody gang up on me. Anybody that liked me had to get taken off the show. I would come back on the season and go, where's Alicia? Where's Natalie? Right. Like, we had a little nice crew going. I really liked you know, that I love point them. that you made about that. And we got to start wrapping up. But um, because it kind of puts perspective mm -hmm. into into your viewers and, yeah. and, and your fans as well. I mean, your fans would probably, like, back up that point, and I'm sure, like, some of them have made it on Twitter or out there in the social world. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I asked them in the chat while you were talking, uh, were you guys surprised by her comment that she's friends with Nat G still? And they were they said yes because of your point about that. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's you kinda, know what you know what Karen crazy. actually was on the show and I think she said that she made up with Nat G. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I gotta she tell did. you the best thing in the world. Oh god. We don't okay. have a lot of time. We don't. So I'll make it real real short. Okay. <laughs> Everybody that ever watched Mom Boys, they yeah. see Karen and Nat G hated each other. It all stems from Alicia. Natalie was sticking up for Alicia, so she started fighting and battling Karen. Right. Right. They were going at it. Natalie told Karen, you're a rat, you're a fed, your father's a rat, went in and in and in, wrecked Karen to destroy her. Karen fought back with her, back and forth, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Karen tried to attack her. Natalie beat the shit out of Karen. She lost the fight. Like, she, she Cecil the turtle. She always ends up on her back. <laughs> so when, when, after she got her ass handed to her, that was that. Guess what happens? They see each other, which is nice. They made amends. Okay. Karen turns around and tells Natalie, the only reason why I, I had a fight with you and pulled your hair is because Drita, because of Drita. Oh, wow. Do you know how funny that is? Come on. That's wow. why she's crazy. She's crazy. <laughs> and now there was another thing. She was, like, telling me on the reunion, why do you sit with Natalie? She's racist. That's what she does. She's a sick liar. So why are you friends with her now? I'm a bit confused. So mm. that's my point, guys. I mean, I, I, it's, it's in black and white. Anyone that has any sort of brain, they could see it and they understand it. But it's better for me to say it. And I really appreciate you having me on the show. Oh, we are so happy. This has been so good. Great. Wait, yes. real quick. So when's the book coming out? Because you said a lot, and I'm sure this and so much more is yes. going to be included in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, the book is so good. Listen, oh, when, you guys, when I get the release date, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to contact you, and we will do another little uh, oh, thing. We'll, we'll shoot out the release yes, date. Please. All the fans, they're going to yes. love it. Yeah, and tell them to stop hating on me now. My God, fans. No, it's all right. Apparently, I heard if you got haters, you're doing something in life. Am I right, Trina? <laughs> right. <laughs> I hope that's a yes. Not. That's a yes. Haters are good, right? That's you know, right. Haters, that's what they tell you in this business. You're good and you're not successful. Yeah, yeah Trina, right? you are welcome back to AfterBuzz anytime. anytime. We're so thankful you spent a little time with us Absolutely. tonight. Absolutely. Yes. And when you come I back, love you guys, thank you very much for having me. I really yeah, do. I yes. feel like I, I don't know why. I feel like I know you. Yeah, uh, I know. Because we're, we're friends. Exactly. We do know each other. Yeah. When you come back, Trina, you have to talk about this TMZ video and you no, and your yes, husband. You know what? As a matter of fact, they've all been we'll, asking we'll, about it. Back, we'll go over that and we'll go over the book. Do you, yeah. wanna, wait, so do you quickly want to say what happened there? Or is it going to take like 50 I minutes? I can't. I can't. All right, I'll let you know when I can. Okay, okay, perfect. Well, until then, be on your best behavior and uh, we love you here at <laughs> After Buzz TV and maybe we'll link up in New York or here in LA yes, when you, you do your book tour. In California. When I do my book tour and I'm in LA, I'm definitely coming out here. We're gonna all hang out. Woo! Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, We're Trita. Ready. We love you. Yes. Fans and love Trita, you. And, love you too. And condolences for your personal losses and especially Ange. Thank it was you. it was devastating for us all. So we Absolutely. we feel for you and uh, our, our hearts are just with you and, and Ange and everyone. Everybody. And everyone that loved her. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. All right, Trita. Thanks so much. We'll Have talk to you night. soon. Yes. Bye. 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 Oh my God! Like, oh, just wonderful. We got Dorita. Everybody. Wonderful. Woo!
on our last episode of After Puzz TV Mob Wives, oh, we got Drina Devanzo oh, here in it. studios. I mean, it's amazing. Everybody's been wishing for it. Um, it was really nice to hear her side too, because we've we've gotten absolutely. to talk to all the ladies this this season, and it's been great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, and we um, will talk to her again. We'll get more mm -hmm. of your questions yes. answered. Sorry that we couldn't answer them all. There's just way too many to ask. And not as enough for, time. Yeah, and as for her spinoff <laughs> show, I don't know if she wants to do any more re reality TV. Can't quote me on that, but we'll find out soon. We'll mm -hmm. find and, out. And uh, where can everyone find you guys? <laughs> yes, um, I have been Blake V, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Blake V Media. It's been great hanging out with you guys, and I'm gonna miss the mob wives. Seriously, oh, I know. Okay, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff at Howard the Third, and of course my website HowardTheThird.com. And thank you for going on this journey with us. We appreciate you. We love you. The good ones, the bad ones. We love you. <laughs> Everyone. And you can find me at Nicole Brazier. Huge shout out to all the PR people over uh, at mm -hmm. Gen Productions and everyone that represents all the mob wives for dealing with me the last couple of seasons, getting all the girls on the show. You're welcome, YouTube fans. So stop hating on me. <laughs> you can find me at Nicole Brazier all over the social media world. We love you, mob wives. We love you, After Buzz. I can't yeah, believe yeah. this is it. But maybe we'll have Crazy. Trina in for I a know, book Trina, tour. We'll see Talk. you soon. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye, you so everyone. much for an amazing Bye. series. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz TV. Buzz later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.